Method chaining allows you to call methods on an object one after another without assigning the return value for each method to a variable. In this tutorial, we are going to look at chaining and how you can use it. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. You have undoubtedly seen method chaining in JavaScript. I think that perhaps one of the first places you may run into method chaining is with jQuery. That is where I first used method chaining. If you have used jQuery, you have probably seen a statement like this. So I place an object, I turn it into a jQuery object, and then I use the find method to look inside that object for something with a class of btn dash sub dash menu and then I limit that even more to the first currents and then I add a class to it line dash current and so this is method chaining here's a method here's a method here's a method and we have put them together using dot syntax and so that one method feeds into the next method which feeds into the next method and technically the jQuery to turn this into a jQuery object is a method as well now this works because each of these methods are returning a jQuery object. And so the subsequent method can act on that jQuery object. And so this returns a jQuery object, find returns a jQuery object, eq returns a jQuery object, add class would return a jQuery object as well. That allows us to do the method chaining in jQuery. Now, to make sure you understand method chaining, let's look at a pure JavaScript example with strings. Now, the string primitive value has a string object wrapper which makes this chaining possible. So here I have a simple string. There is a misspelling. There's a space at the start of it, a space at the end of it. And let's say I want to clean this up a bit. So first thing I'm going to do is replace the misspelling. So I use the replace method of the string object wrapper. And I'm not going to get fancy with this. I'm simply going to replace the misspelling with the correct spelling. And then I want to convert it to all uppercase. So now I act on str1. I've, I've placed the results of the replace method into str1. And so I'm going to act on that and do two uppercase. And place those results into str2. And then let's say I want to trim that string. So one more time. SCR2, that's what I'm going to act on. And that will trim the spaces off of the back and the front. And then I can simply log to the console the results, which is in STR3. If I save that and we refresh and we open the console, that's what we get. And STR3, if we look at it, has no spaces before and after. It's all uppercase. We're seeing it on the console. All right, now I can do this with chaining. Look at all the typing that I've had to do here. And one of the benefits of using chaining is that it saves on typing and can create more concise code. And so let's look at how we would do that. I want to log the results to the console just like I did previously. But here's how we would do the chaining. str dot replace. I'm going to use replace again. And the exact same code. But now once replace is done, replace returns a string that has the string object wrapper. So I can immediately do dot and enter to uppercase. And then once again, I can immediately do dot and use trim. 
So this way we've chained these methods together and done it in a single line. And so it's much more concise. If I save that, refresh, we can see that we get both of them here. And they're exactly the same. Now, this same type of thing can be done with arrays. Many of the array methods return an array as the results. And therefore, because they belong, those methods belong to the same object, you can chain array methods. The next method you use in a chain must be part of whatever object is passed by the preceding method. That's the key. And that's what's happening here. So the string object wrapper is passed by replace, by two uppercase, and even by trim. So in order for this to work with arrays, the method must return an array object, which many of them do. Now, you can even mix objects if you choose to. For example, let me show you what would happen here if I did dot .split, and then I'm going to split on the spaces in that phrase. And what split does it is it creates an array. So that's going to return an array object. Well, then let's go ahead and use one of the array methods, join. This will join it back to a string, but it will join it with the character that I place inside of the quotes. And so replace returns a string. To uppercase returns a string. Trim returns a string. Split returns an array. Join can act on that array and then returns a string. So let's see what we get here. And there's our same string, but it has hyphens in between instead of spaces. Now, it is possible that when you set up your, your own objects, if you're creating your own objects in JavaScript, you can make sure the methods can chain. Let's look at that. Now, I'm going to copy in some code so you don't have to watch me type it. And let me go ahead and paste that code in here. Let me explain it really quick. So first, we have an object I've created. Signed a, a, a first name to it, last name, and a score is just an empty array. And then we have three methods. Add score simply pushes another value onto the score array. Do total uses the reduce method of arrays to come up with a total, the total value of all of those scores. If you're not familiar with reduce, I'll include a link in the description section of a tutorial that covers some of those array methods, such as reduce. Then I also have a method do average, which basically computes the average by taking the total and dividing it by the length of the score array. And it assigns it to average. The total gets assigned to total. The score, of course, is already here. And so it just pushes another value onto that empty array. Well, here we have some code to act on that object. We add a score, and then we add another score, and then we add another score, then we do a total, then we do an average. So let me save that, refresh, and if I display OBJ and open that up, we can see that we have an average, we have three scores in the score array, and we have a total. So all those methods work. Now, what if we wanted to use chaining with this? I mean, look at, we have three add scores right together. It'd be nice to just chain all these together and be more concise. Well, let's see what would happen. So I'm going to start with OBJ and then add score. And I'll do 100 first. Now let's see if we can add score again and do 80. Add score one more time, do the 95. Now let's see if we can do the total and also do the average. Now let me comment out these ones. Let's save this and go ahead and see what we got. So we get a syntax error. Basically, cannot read property add score of undefined. That's what it's telling us. So this first add score method is causing a syntax error, and all the others would as well. 
And so remember, the trick to doing chaining is our methods need to return the object. That way, the next method can act on that. Okay. So just like at the start of this, we have the object dot add score. Well, for this next add score, we need to have the object there as well. So how do we do that? Well, it's as simple as this. We come up to our methods here and we simply enter return this as the very last line of that method. I'm going to do that with all of these. Now think about why this works. When we're returning this, we are returning the object, OBJ. We're returning that object. And so we add the score, it returns the object. Then we have, it's just like having OBJ.addScore again. Returns the object, OBJ.addScore, OBJ.doTotal, OBJ.doAverage. So that's why that works. That's why chaining works. So let me go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and try it out. Refresh. Let's go and take a look at OBJ. And sure enough, we get the same results. This time doing it with chaining as opposed to doing a separate line for each one of those. So that's the key to chaining. And chaining can be valuable to write more concise code and save on typing. But also one other advantage it provides is that when you're developing your functions, you're more likely to create smaller, more specialized functions. Instead of one function that does both the total and the average, for example, I've separated these out into two specialized functions. Now, one of the disadvantages of chaining, which I think is important to be aware of as well, is that it makes it more difficult to debug. So let's say that I had an error in one of these uh, methods. Well, when the error displays, it will show me this line. With this line, I'm not exactly sure which method is causing the error. So I've got to dig into it more to figure out where that error occurs. So it can make it a little bit more difficult to debug. All right, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and personalized courses and to support this channel. Thanks for watching.